So this big beast is the 4294 4882. And just look at this mammoth size. You can see in these old pictures um, of how big it actually is. And it had an articulated design, which means the train was so long and so big to get around corners, the uh, wheels in the front were on a pivot point. And the train, the wheels would turn around the track. Look how big it is compared to me. As you can see, it's huge. Here's another old footage of it. So the story is, um, it's a cab four design and it was designed to pull freight over the Sierra Nevadas. And the cab four means in, in a traditional train, the engineer would sit behind the front of the train. Well, the, they reversed it. So the train's technically going backwards in this. And that was so when the train engineer went through the tunnels in the Sierra Nevada, he wasn't completely uh, suffocated by all the smoke and ash and soot created by this giant train. Um, one of the things they did not like about um, driving in the train, as you can see in this photo here, is there's no protection. If they got involved in some kind of accident or something like that, um, a traditional train, the whole front of the train is like a giant you know, bumper against being injured. But this one um, didn't have that option. Uh, it was a million pounds. Um, this uh, engine weighs, which is hard to fathom. And again, <clears throat> I have my camera set to super wide angle and you can barely fit the train in it. You can kind of see by that person on the top there. The wheels on this thing is just it's just a mammoth, huge train engine and meticulously restored. They did an amazing job restoring it. Um, it ran, ran for only 12 years, 1944 um, to 1956. And I think it's, uh, it runs on oil. Um, Coal was not readily available in California, um, so they ran this on oil. A lot of the trains, uh, tourist trains now, that have been running on coal are converting to oil because coal um, is a very big fire hazard because the, the sparks and hot coals can drop on the track and create a situation where you got uh, fire danger but here's an angle here you can just see how mammoth this thing is next to that guy reading the sign it really is an amazing train and we're gonna go inside here and talk to the guy all about it and hopefully learn even more than I have told you okay to come in yeah come in you know, the rest of them, I'm not sure what they do anymore. This thing's a beast. It's a million pounds. It's a million pounds. A million pounds. <laughs> it was the largest and the last steam locomotive. Thank you so You're much. very welcome. It's good to see you guys. It was the last and the largest steam locomotive Southern Pacific ever owned. For it, freight? Uh, it was designed for freight. They did use it in full passengers, but it was designed mainly for freight. Designed for freight over the Sierras. Reaching for that is a uh, normal yeah. locomotive. Yeah. <laughs> the shuttle would be going this way. The engineer would be carrying around it. It would be right. shoveling coal, all that. Right. This one is so large. Yeah. And the tunnels and the snow sheds and the Sierra, such tight clearance. That if we were doing that, the smoke and heat would come right back at us. Two of us couldn't breathe. Oh, I see. So it's redesigned where this is the front. Huh. See, the seats are with our backs to the boilers. Yeah. And the smoke and heat would go behind us as well. So it's called a cab forward, the cabs in the forward part of the train, and it's the last one that exists. You kind of see it here, this is the big boy. We would normally be here. Right. Smoking heat. Yeah. So instead we're up here, smoking heat are going to go back to smoke. That's smart. Yeah, yeah, it was. Wow. 
they needed a train this big for the the loads they're yeah, pulling. For the loads they're pulling. Let's say can pull 50 to 80 uh, fully loaded box cars over the Sierras. Not very fast, but we're pulling over the Sierras. Wow. Oil, and they're 1,700 degrees. When's the last time this thing ran? 1956. Yeah. It was might be late. It was built in 44. Uh, oh wow. The railroads were converting to diesels yeah. in the late 30s, but World War II came along. They needed diesels for military purposes, so they kept building steam. But it was only on the rails for 12, 12 years. 12 years. Because they were converting to diesels as soon as they could have. Man, I bet this thing was uh, shook the whole town when it went by. Yeah, I bet it did. <laughs> a million pounds? Yeah, I've seen some pictures of them running them in tandem as well. You can imagine two of these things coming by. And it must have been extremely hot. It was yeah. 15 to 20 degrees hotter than the air temperatures. Were, the temperature in was. here. And very noisy. Oh, yeah. Lots of vibration. Yeah. 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 It'd be nice to see one of these run someday. I think those days are done, though. Well, you know, they've restored a big boy, which is actually larger than this. <coughs> and it's running on the yeah. tracks now. I think I saw a video. Was that Pennsylvania or something? Well, there's one that, uh, I think they've only restored one. There's one I saw a video just last week that was heading down towards New Orleans. I, I don't know if the hurricane wow. influenced it or not, but it's running down there. Throttle? So throttle. you'd actually sit like this? Yep. And this would be closed so you get a better view. That's pretty good view, actually. It is. Well, it was a great view, and you could breathe, so it was great. Yeah. <laughs> the bad part from the cruise standpoint was for the classic locomotive, like that one, yeah. if you hit something, you got a lot of metal between you and it. Right. With these, you got nothing. You know, and that, the cruise really didn't like that. Well, yeah, but you're high up, but I mean, well, I wouldn't want to be a, something on a track. No, no, no. And this is the whistle. whistle. This is the independent brake, so this is just for the locomotive. And this is for the whole train that runs the air brakes in the cars. You can say they're very well used. Yeah. It's, well, it's also been a museum for a Oh, that's true. <laughs> and a lot of kids touched that over the years. Wow. Museum opened at 81. When great. I was a little kid, I wanted to be an engineer. But Did you? Never. I grew up in uh, Capitola. Mm hmm In the train trestle right through the town. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to ride my bicycle down when I heard the train coming and I had time to catch it go by. Cool. And that kind of started my passion for trains. I didn't grow up near train tracks, but we almost bought a house in Davis <coughs> a two years ago. And traction for me, a traction for me was right near the train tracks. Right. My wife kind of vetoed it on the same grounds. <laughs> she said, I don't want to hear a train day. There's a place in, uh, I think, South Africa where it's like... Because they still use steam trains. Oh, really? Really? Well, a lot of use it for just regular service. Yeah, because yeah. the, the, the economy. Uh, some place where you can rent this, and steam trains are going by all oh, the time. Geez. And this is the, the boiler? That is the firebox where they burn the oil. And you see at the back of it, there's kind of a shape. Yeah. Those are the long tubes that go to the boiler. So the air would be very hot. You know, if you're looking for a way out. So it rush through those tubes, into those tubes. Yeah. They're in the boiler surrounded by water. And that's what's going to make the And steam. you guys had to shovel stuff in here all the time, or no? No, no it's, it's oil burning. I was going to say, I don't, I don't think they could have shoveled fast right. enough. And there's also no place to put coal and wood up here. Uh, in California, we had converted to oil starting in 1900, early 1900. Oh, okay. We had no coal to speak of. It was all imported, and there was plenty of oil. This is all to regulate the steam pressure. That is all for the firemen. This is what regulated the amount of oil that's being burned in there, or less oil. These were the main water controls to bring water back from the uh, uh, tender up to the boiler. Huh, wow. Steam pressure, you want to be at 250 on this. Um, these gauges, the sight gauges, you're looking at your water level in the boiler. Oh, okay. The one for the engineer as well because it's so important. If that goes dry, you've got a bomb on your hands, right? Exactly right, sir. Exactly <laughs> right. These are monitoring the temperature and the levels of the water in the, in the tender. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we're missing some gauges and all this. So How much water does this thing go through? It, it carried 22,000 gallons in the tender, and it's about 10,000 in the boiler. We had to stop three times for water. You guys can come in if you want. We had to stop. We had to stop three times for water to get over the Sierra. Excuse me. Yeah. Wow. Come on in. Just yeah, cool. Very cool. Yeah,
Thank you for telling me all that. That's awesome. What do I do? I love it. It's fun. Hi. Uh, so you're Hi the largest. Excuse me. Hey, Vivian. The largest and the last in the South Wow, that thing's amazing. Largest and last steam engine, so the circuit made. 